Hey guys, welcome to Redneck Off The Range, and today I have an exciting new update on the lake out at the farm. Now, some of you may remember I posted a video, I don't know, a couple months ago now, that uh, we put in this aeration system, and uh, whenever we started it up, it actually killed pretty much all of the fish. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, I added some updates on the fact that I am starting to find more and more life in the lake since that happened. You know, I found uh, grass-eating carp, at least one grass-eating carp. I found some little, you know, baby bluegill, maybe up to like three inches long. Um, there's all kinds of frogs in there, which means there will be all kinds of tadpoles, and there were all kinds of tadpoles. Um, and then there's also, you know, the first thing we noticed was all of the minnows that were in the lake, and there's just thousands upon thousands of minnows. And so, you know, whenever we get fish in there, it's just going to be like a big buffet. So, this weekend, uh, just for S's and G's, I decided I was going to go out and try to catch myself some live bait, and didn't have a whole lot of luck on that, you know, I couldn't find any worms, and at first I couldn't really find any like crickets or grasshoppers, but I did find a daddy long leg on the garage door, and so I took that, put it on a hook, and I threw it in the water, and lo and behold, uh, after a couple of casts out, I actually caught a tiny four inch baby bass, and um, I thought that was really cool, because that was the first sign of live bass in the lake since this happened. Um, but I wasn't able to replicate that, you know, I couldn't catch another bass for, you know, that hour or so that I was going around and just trying to catch fish. So after dinner, um, I actually went and, and, you know, caught some grasshoppers and was able to, between me and my dad anyway, we were able to catch four more, uh, baby bass and they were all about the same size, all about four inches long. And so that means that this newest generation of bass that was probably born in the spring survived the fish apocalypse, if you will. And so that's actually really exciting. Now, um, so that only left two species left in the lake that I hadn't, that I hadn't found signs of. So this morning, just for S's and G's, I found a little, you know, a little bitty uh, chartreuse curly tail grub, and I threw it on a hook, put a weight on the line, and I threw it out off the side of the levee, and was just reeling in, you know, pretty slow, giving it a little jerk every now and then, and I actually caught four different crappie, and two of them were actually pretty good size. I'd say maybe nine, possibly even up to ten inches. Um, but the smallest one was probably about five inches. So um, not only did I catch crappie, which I hadn't seen before since the fish apocalypse, but I actually caught good size crappie. And not only did I catch those four, but I also probably got about seven, eight, maybe nine bites on top of the four that I already caught. So um, there are crappie in the lake. And not only are there just crappie, there is good, um, you know, good, healthy, adult-sized crappie. And that's really exciting. And I have two theories on why there are actually big crappie in the lake, and that is, one, either they're just a hardier fish than all the other fish, and they, you know, the majority of them didn't end up dying, or the crappie actually live in the deepest part of the lake, at least the, mo the majority of them live in the deepest part of the lake. And so maybe the aerator, the aerators um, are higher than where the crappie are actually living, and so a decent amount of them actually survived. Um, that's another possibility as well. I don't really know because I haven't found any decent sized bass, you know, they're all about this big, and I have not seen any catfish. Um, and, you know, all the uh, bluegill are just really small. I haven't found a full-size bluegill yet. So, um, while this is a very exciting 
discovery, I think it's actually going to be bad for restocking the lake. And here's why, because I can't find any decent sized bluegill, and I haven't caught any decent sized bluegill um, other than what I was able to catch in the minnow trap, and that just leads me to believe that there really aren't any. Um, if there are, they're few and far between. And so, um, not having full size bluegill and having to add more bluegill and red ear and hybrids into the lake. Um, they're all going to be really small. In fact, by the time we get them in, um, some of those larger crappie and, and those bass will eventually get to the size where they could just go through and just devour all of these bluegill and red ears. So what I'm thinking is definitely in the spring, but possibly even in the fall, it really just depends on when we're able to get these fish in there. Um, we're going to have to go through and just try to fish out as many of these larger predator fish as we possibly can and if they're big enough we can fillet them and and fry them up or um, if they're smaller um, I can just cut them up and use them as catfish bait in the future um, but you really don't want to have all these predator fish in there now if there are catfish in there I'm not too concerned about the catfish because one I don't think the catfish actually reproduce in the lake um, it's, they say it's very rare that a uh, channel catfish will reproduce in a, a lake like that. I, I don't know, maybe they need a, um, a current or, or something in order to produce, like I've read that carp need, you know, carp are supposedly, they have to have a current, like a river or a stream, in order to lay their eggs and produce. Um, so I don't know if catfish are the same way, but, um, generally speaking, catfish don't reproduce in private ponds like that. Um, not 100% sure why, but uh, the other reason why I'm not concerned about it is because catfish, generally speaking, don't feed off of other fish, They unless it's like an injured fish. Um, but generally speaking, a catfish doesn't like prey on all of these other species of fish unless it finds like an injured one. Um, which is why you can catch them on minnows and, and small bluegill and stuff, but generally speaking, a catfish isn't just going to go around and eat um, all these other species of fish. They are bottom feeders, and so, um, and, you know, in stocking a catfish pond, at least the local fishery actually does say that you don't have to do your your spring stocking and your fall stocking, you can do just one stocking of all your fish all at the same time. Um, and that's because catfish don't generally feed off of fish the way that bass and crappie and other species of, of predator fish do. You know, bass, they eat, they just go after those smaller fish, and crappie, they just go after those smaller fish. Catfish, not so much. I mean, it, they do but not at the same rate as um, bass and crappie. And that's also why they say you can, you know, in the, the stocking rates, you know, they'll say, you know, put so many of this species, so many of that species. That's also why um, if you look at a, a catfish stocking rate, they have such a wide range of what you can stock. You know, they, they say, at least on this website I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the local fishery website, they say you can put as few as a hundred or as many as a thousand in the same acre of water. So, and that's, that's with like, you know, a hundred bluegill and a hundred red ear, or, you know, a couple hundred of each in the same body of water. It's just, you know, catfish don't feed off of fish the way that bass and crappie do. So, and another thing is I would really, I'm kind of interested and adding a couple of species, or at least one other species of fish into the lake. And in order to do that again, I would have to take out as many predator fish as I possibly could to make, to, to get them to reproduce and become like an actual colony of, of these other fish. And I'm really interested in yellow perch and walleye. Um, and the, those two just kind of go hand in hand and I'll probably do some videos on the topic as well later on, maybe when we get closer. But um, generally speaking, if you want, if you're going to stock walleye, which is a really cool fish and a really good tasting fish, 
um, you need to have yellow perch because yellow perch is like their main, you know, forage fish. I mean, they'll eat uh, bluegill and red ear and, you know, any other types of sunfish. Um, I'm sure they'll eat shad and, you know, basically anything smaller, but the two just kind of go hand in hand. And so I really want to start out with trying to get some yellow perch if I can find any. Um, I think this fishery does sell them. Yeah, get some yellow perch in there and then get a few walleye in there, you know, the following uh, fall, um, along with the bass and the crappie and the catfish. I don't know how well this will work. I'm not sure how many people actually put all these different species of fish in, but most people, you know, they're looking for, you know, they want a bass pond, they want a crappie pond, um, and generally speaking, when you do that, you only put one species of predator fish in there, but that's so that you can get like the monster trophy size fish, you know. Everybody's concerned with the big monster trophy size bass. I'm not really concerned with that. I'm fine with a moderate size bass, you know, a one or two pounder, um, and be able to catch all these other different species of fish because I think it's cool to catch different species of fish. I like catching bluegill, I like catching crappie, bass, catfish. Um, I like catching all these different species of fish and I just think it would be really cool to add some species of fish to the lake if it's possible. So um, in order to do that obviously we're probably going to have to take out a lot of those predator fish. I mean we'll, we'll never get them all but I think if we dramatically decrease the numbers they'll all these smaller fish that we put in there will have a better chance of survival and then they'll all grow at the same rate or well you know relatively the same rate because not all fish grow at the same rate but you, you know what I mean anyway so that is the exciting new update for the lake so subscribe to my channel and until next time be safe